Hey everybody, David the Eye Guide here. Welcome to another episode. So amazing story from Reuters giving us a real inside look at how AI is transforming the biggest companies. AI hasn't trickled down to mid-tier and lower-tier companies yet, but it will. So this article is about Blackstone, which is the largest alternative asset manager in the United States, maybe the world. And it's an interview with their CEO, Stephen Schwartzman, who by happenstance I met at a funeral and talked to for a few minutes back when I was working in New York. Interesting man, as you might guess. So back in 2015, eight years ago, Schwartzman sat next to Jack Ma on a bus in China on the way to a meeting. Jack Ma, obviously co-founder of Alibaba Group. As the bus stalled for more than an hour in traffic, Ma began to tell Schwartzman about the promises and perils of AI. So this was way before anyone was talking about it in the public, pretty much. I had no idea what he was talking about, recall Schwartzman. Now that from a man who is at the center of the universe in many, many ways, that you're going to hear about. Schwartzman was dazzled by the new technology's possibilities. He had Blackstone recruit a team of data scientists to begin disseminating AI usage throughout his firm. Today, Blackstone, the world's largest alternative asset manager, relies on AI to assess the risk in assets it aims to acquire. It employs AI to forecast demand and instantly provide prices for every business customer using its vast inventory of e-commerce warehouses. Within the company, data scientists sit on investment teams to ensure that AI tools help close deals or turn them down. Now, keep in mind that this company buys and sells other companies all day long, every day. That's what they do. And they own assets now. We're going to hear about that. Hype notwithstanding, AI is transforming Blackstone at a faster clip than any of its rivals. Blackstone's business model is well suited for AI. With one trillion of assets under management spread over more than 230 portfolio companies, meaning companies they bought and currently own and haven't sold yet, and massive holdings in real estate, private equity, and credit funds. Blackstone owns a plethora of the proprietary data that is the lifeblood of AI. You have a lot more data to train your models than a smaller player, says a partner at McKinsey. You also attract a lot more talented people. So Blackstone has hired more than 50 data scientists. These are high paid people. Early on, the data scientists concentrated on predictive AI, which scours through data to forecast everything from budgets and sales to customer clicks on a website. In the last couple of years, Blackstone data scientists have combined predictive AI with generative AI. Generative AI creates new images and text from the data it has been trained on to instantly gain insights and recognize patterns across every possible business activity. We believe that it gives us a real competitive advantage, said Jonathan Gray, Blackstone's president. They do mention that their AI effort has concerns, right? Cybersecurity. They don't want anyone hacking this database and the fact that AI can hallucinate. There's always hype with every new technology, says another McKinsey partner. Hype attracts capital. So Blackstone is using their AI effort to raise a ton of money. Like the rest of the alternative, a alternative asset management industry, business has lagged lately. They've had bad returns lately. Capital inflows at Blackstone were only a third of the assets raised during the same period last year in 2022. That's in Q2, April to June. Schwartzman says, 
This is a transformational technology. You have to be first mover in your industry. So how does Blackstone get their companies and their portfolio to use AI? First, make chief executives feel personally comfortable with AI by teaching them how it works. Then appoint a tech-minded senior executive to oversee the implementation of AI in the company to improve productivity, i.e. cut costs and people. Finally, Blackstone urges portfolio companies to make use of their AI resources. At Blackstone itself, one of the more visible impacts of AI is in its investment process. Before AI, he would turn over potential acquisitions to analysts who took at least two days to come up with an investment model and send them a PowerPoint presentation. Now, when I get a call from an investment banker, we have AI tools that can build a high quality first model while I'm still on the phone. So the head of North America for Blackstone is last name Brand. Once Brand decides to further explore a possible deal for an asset pitched him over the phone or in person, he turns it over to a deal team that includes data scientists. Is it perfect, he says? No, but it gives you a solid baseline to work off of. Besides using its own AI platform for deal making, Blackstone contracts with outside AI services for a bunch of tasks. For example, they're using Microsoft Copilot, which is just rolling out to everyone who owns Business 365, not personal. Salesforce, another big tech player who has their AI conferences coming week, by the way, provides an AI product called Einstein GPT. Blackstone uses it in a private wealth management business to contact clients with personalized investment suggestions. On the engineering side of Blackstone, it writes software codes and creates new software. This product called Cody from a company called Sourcegraph. Stecker estimates that Cody cuts in half the time needed for programming. Watch out programmers. For all the AI to work at its best, they bring the data all together in one massive database. Blackstone's technology department has overseen the acquisition of cybersecurity startups that are supposed to prevent AI leaks from Blackstone's enormous pool of proprietary data. And then they talked to this guy named Lawrence Glazer, who founded an investment advisor firm called Mayflower in Boston. Glazer is apprehensive about the outpouring of media reports on cybersecurity breaches because he uses Blackstone a lot for their investment advisor rebusiness. So Blackstone, as it turns out, owns a ton of the big warehouses that serve Amazon and others. Blackstone began buying warehouses in 2010 and soon noticed that its e-commerce firms were leasing these spaces at a crazy pace. Over the next 13 years, Blackstone amassed 175 billion worth of warehouses worldwide. That is a stunning number, stunning. It became necessary for Blackstone to create an in-house firm called Link Logistics in 2019 to manage half a billion square feet of warehouses and service 11,000 customers. The scale of Blackstone is just Hard to believe. Blackstone soon discovered that the long, reliable Excel spreadsheets were not quick enough to make the myriad decisions on pricing and demand forecasting or to pick up near-term and seasonal business trends. So Blackstone placed a team of data science scientists in Link who built a centralized AI-powered algorithm to drive all pricing decisions across it logistic assets in the U.S. AI then determines instantly how much warehouse space a customer needs for a million beer cans or a dozen scooters, how far away the warehouse is from a FedEx or UPS hub, and what the closest airport or ship harbor is, and how much it's going to cost the customer. So it's easy to see from that example that a human can do that, over days, right, for a single customer where the AI is doing it instantly. 
says Link CEO Luke Petherbridge. If this were baseball, we're only in the first or second inning. So, so the AI rollout is just beginning, is what he's saying. And this from one of the biggest companies in the entire world at the forefront of AI. Blackstone is raking in AI-related profits from the services provided by its own data centers. In digital infrastructure, there's a well-publicized arms race happening in AI. That's what the very last video was about. And the major tech companies are expected to invest $1 trillion over the next five years in this area for data centers. A trillion dollars. Blackstone paid $10 billion in 2021 to acquire QTS Realty Trust, one of the largest data center businesses in the world. Blackstone's competitors, Brookfield Asset Management and KKR, are also heavily invested in data centers. A continuing costly problem for Blackstone and its peers is the need to upgrade older data centers. And that's why last video talked about how totally new data centers are being built for AI. Incorporating more AI tools into its portfolio companies is another important source of revenue and profit growth for Blackstone. So they're charging the companies they've bought for using AI as a service. Great business model. So there's another company called DNA Nexus, which helps pharma and biotech firms handle massive amounts of genomic data that transcends the capabilities of even the largest drug companies. They are using Blackstone's services. Blackstone has worked to expand DNA Nexus's data infrastructure by installing a data scientist there. So finally, Schwartzman gave $221 million to Oxford University to start an institute for the study of the ethical implications of AI and other new computing technologies. So even a, a multi-billionaire like Schwartzman understands that AI is problematic. He goes on to say, by the time this center is set up, it will probably prove impossible to put a break on the AI roller coaster. So strap yourself in for this one. So quick summary, because this was a long video. Blackstone and other Wall Street firms, massive firms, are buying up all the data centers. They're upgrading them or building them from scratch to run AI. That means that AI's exponential curve will continue to steepen. Its penetration will create continue to get broader and broader because these people will start selling AI services to the less big, big companies and then mid-sized companies and ultimately small-sized companies. AI will permeate everywhere in the economy and the guy at the top of the biggest asset manager in the world says there's nothing that's going to stop this. So that's all we need to know, isn't it? Please like, subscribe, and share. Please support this channel on Patreon. We appreciate it. Take care. Bye.